My name is Michael Barge. Uh, I am with SmartGraft and I am one of their technicians. Today I'm just going to go over the uh, setup of the SmartGraft device itself and all the functionality that, that it includes. Over here you have disposable packs. They are autoclaved, just as in the pack itself. So first thing you want to do is open this up. Okay, you'll notice that there are three different canisters in here, all with different color lids. That really helps you to distinguish which ones go in what places. The first one that we put in is actually the graph canister. This actually has a basket for the graphs to go into. And that'll go into the first position over into the left-hand side. Now, the way that I like to set this up that makes it easier for the tubes to be aligned properly is to use these opening top tabs all facing to, towards the left-hand side. The second one in position would be the white, the one with the white lid. Inside it has a second graph canister. You do not need to use this right now. That is just for efficiency of handing off the graphs to the other technicians. You want to make sure these lids are securely tightened and put that one in the middle position. This third one actually contains the tubing sets that are going to be connected later. This one has a clear top with a long tube. The reason for this long tube is this is the canister that the sterile saline solution goes into that wets the graphs. Again, put the top on tightly and put that into the third position. Now, first thing you should do when starting your device is to actually use the chiller and get that down to a good temperature so you want to put that on in the, in the chiller light itself. This is the first touch screen of two. Um, here is a next button and we'll get into that a little bit later here but let's first connect the tubing. So the first tube that I like to put on is the one to the filter. If you notice it does not have a nozzle tip onto it and this will connect right to the filter. And just slides on. It does not have to go on all the way. Now this nozzle tip will go right into the next hole right to its right hand side and that's its proper location. The second one is kind of wrapped up into a little ball here for you. Just open it up. This has two different tips on it. One is wider, one is thinner. This wider one is going to go on in the position where the tube actually comes down into the saline because it's going to grab the saline and take it over to the graph canister. So this one is going to go way over here to the center nozzle. This center nozzle here is actually the sprayer that sprays the graphs and keeps them moist. Now to load this correctly on this screen, this first screen, is it says shower tube. You want to hit load where it goes unlock and you just want to push this tube in until it clicks. The third tube actually has two different nozzles on. They're both the same and it's going to be basically going from the graph canister over to the overflow canister. So each one has a, has a function here. This one is going to capture the graphs. This one is going to be the overflow, the saline from the misting. And this one here is actually going to contain the saline itself to go over to the graph canisters to keep the graphs wet. So that's the basic graph canister setup. Now we have to do the handpiece itself. So this is the handpiece that connects to the motor. First I like to put in the punch. Uh, it does have a little locking mechanism so the easiest way to do this is just to set in the non-cutting edge and just do a light little tiny twist and it locks right in. Cannot come out. That's how you test it to make sure that it's in there securely. Um, if you don't have this in securely you'll lose a little bit of suction and you'll know that it's, it's that actually that part of the device. Um, to, to put this onto the motor itself, it has a little tiny insert here with a protrusion. You want to make sure they line up and it just snaps on like that. To remove, you just pull it off. Same thing to get it back on. Now to remove the punch, you will have to use this back cap to actually pull it out. But you do not need to depress that button while putting it in. This just sets down on its nice little handle here. Um, the last tube is actually going to be the tubes that the graphs come in from the handpiece into the graph canister. You'll notice there is a connector on one side and just basic tubing on the other side. 
This tubing will fit into the last hole position where the grafts will go into the basket. And this will actually just connect right onto the back end of it. And it is actually secure. If you want to take this off, you'll just have to pull it right off. But it actually does create a suction that actually holds it in place. Now after all of it's set up, we'll go over a little bit of the functionality. We've covered this screen here really just to turn on the chiller, the chiller light, so you can actually see the fluids to make sure that this does not overflow. And then you have the shower tube, which is all locked in. Down here, you'll depress the next button. And you'll see over here, it actually does have a graph counter to clear this, which there is a number there from a previous case. Uh, we would just hit this button and it would ask, are you sure that you want to clear the counter? You would depress yes. You have here vacuum, the handpiece motor, the handpiece light, which is actually an added, added function onto this. It does provide a really good light source for you. You do have the graph shower that you can turn on and de determine how often you want the saline to spray. So let's start off first by hitting the vacuum. And you want to make sure that it gets very close to 100%. If you see that it doesn't get close to 100%, the easiest thing to do is it's probably just this little tiny filter just needs to be pushed in a little bit more, this tube. The handpiece motor, you can turn that on. You can change the punch rotation to left to right for left-handers or right-handers. It's really your preference. In order to uh, change the RPMs on the punch, because some people like it slower or faster, it's really going to be up to the operator's uh, preference. You want to depress the foot pedal while using the knob to either turn it to the left to lower it or turn it to the right to increase the speed of the punch. Again, it's really going to be operator dependent. The third button is actual the handpiece light. You won't actually see that come on until, again, you depress the foot pedal. It will stay on for a little bit, but it'll continue as you use the foot pedal. Now, one thing I want you to, to notice is every time I push that foot pedal, there is a graph count will, will increase. Um, that is how the uh, graph counter operates. The last one is actually the graph shower, and you want to hit that on button. Like I said previously, you can change the amount of time that is in between uh, rinsings of the graphs themselves, which just is a simple depression of these buttons, more or less. Most people opt to use between four and five minutes. It's really going to be up to you how often you, know, you want them to be showered. Just keep in mind, the more that you shower them, the more saline is going to go in here, and you really just need to pay mind to how much saline goes into this. As far as troubleshooting, there really isn't anything to troubleshoot. There is a few things. One is that if you were to hear a squealing of the device at all, it would be one of these, which I'll show you, one of these gaskets on the lids. Each lid has a rubber gasket inside the lid. You just need to make sure that is laying flat and snug. And that will, that will take away that issue if it does squeal. It doesn't happen often, but it can. There is actually one more switch on this device. It's a pretty cool button. In case that anything happens with the computer and the screen malfunctions, which I've never seen, there is an emergency button here that you can turn on. And basically what that allows is the vacuum to work and the handpiece to work. So it's actually still a functional device. You probably will lose control over all this, but you can definitely get through your case. It's just a safety measure. Um, that's been installed, not really necessary, but we like, to, we like to think of everything. So, After turning that off, there is one other troubleshooting issue that I like to say is that one thing you need to make sure of, absolutely, without a doubt, is that you do keep an eye on the saline level here. You will need to stop the device if this water level gets too high and empty the canister. The reason for that is, is you do not want water to get into the system. Now, this filter is a very good high quality filter. It does stop water very well, but I don't think you really need to test that. So just keep in mind, that's why these glass window panes are here that you can actually see in, see the saline rise up and empty it accordingly. 
that's pretty much the setup of the smart graph device and all the troubleshooting aspects of it. And that's have fun with your device.